Back in 2017, I remember we got our hands on exclusive preview of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. We quickly did our review, and I, at the time, considered it to be the best phone of 2016. Well, a few weeks later, it started to catch fire, and I got a lot of heat from people saying that, why are you giving this phone such great reviews when it's blowing up? But I'll tell you, at the time, we didn't know that it was going to blow up like it did. It did have some battery issues. Samsung apologized, and there was a lot of speculation if they were going to bring back the Note line. Well, there's a huge fanfare of people that love their Note. A lot of people didn't even want to give away their Note 7. They didn't care if it blew up. They were willing to take that risk. And Samsung listened to their customers and decided to release it again. And I have it here, the new Samsung Galaxy Note 8. And I have to tell you, just like last year, I think this is a fantastic phone. But there are a couple of things you got to look out for. Now, this is coming out after the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. If you find that the S8 Plus is too big, you're definitely going to struggle with the Note. It is slightly larger on all fronts. And trust me, I can tell you from experience, it is difficult to use with one hand. But a lot of people use the iPhone 7 Plus, which is really large when you consider its screen size. That's probably the closest phone that matches the Note 8 in its size. What really strikes out on the Note 8 is the display. It's got a QHD AMOLED display that is absolutely stunning. The colors really pop out, especially if you're watching Netflix or, or watching a YouTube video. You're really going to notice that. Or if you're just scrolling through pictures, everything really pops out. Compared to the S8, there are a few design differences. Of course, this being the Note, it's going to have the S Pen, which is housed on the bottom right, just off to the side of the USB-C charger. When you take the stylus out, what you're going to notice is that it's very similar to the Note 7. In fact, I can't see much difference, even though Samsung says they have made improvements to the S Pen. For all purposes, it looks very similar to last year's version. What's remarkable, though, is that even though the Note has an S Pen and stylus, it still has that same level of IP68 water resistant as the S8. So you could actually put this in water and it is not going to get damaged, which is remarkable, especially when you have open ports when the stylus is out. To this day, I don't know how they do that, but it is very, very impressive. I remember seeing Sony do that with the Xperia line way back in the day. Now, the only issue I have with the Note's design, and this is the same issue I had with the S8 Plus, is where they put the fingerprint scanner. In typical phones, you would have the fingerprint scanner right on the front. However, there is no dedicated button on the front for that fingerprint scanner. The, the home button is actually a virtual one that sits on top of the screen. So what Samsung decided was to put the fingerprint scanner on the back beside the cameras. And trust me, if you have small hands, and I'd say for the majority of the population, it's going to be very hard to reach if you're holding this in one hand. You're going to really have to stretch your index finger to be able to unlock your phone with the fingerprint scanner on the back. Now what really separates the Galaxy Note 8 from all the other phones that we've tried thus far is the cameras. Not one, but two cameras on the back that are both 12 megapixels. When you combine those together, you're going to have a lot of flexibility when it comes to taking pictures. The biggest difference is it features optical image stabilization. So even if you're using the two times optical zoom, your snaps are gonna be blur free. And I've tried this, I've been moving around taking photos and it's pretty impressive. What impressed me the most, however, was this new feature called Live Focus, which allows you to achieve those blurry background effects that you would see on a DSLR camera, except you're doing it on a smartphone. Now, these software-based blurring effects can often look terrible, but with my time on the Note 8 and the pictures that I have taken, it's amazing. A lot of people think that I took those photos with a DSLR, and then when I tell them it was with the Note 8 and it was all done on software, they were very impressed. So you took a photo of somebody, you can actually adjust the background after the fact, which is an amazing feature. I didn't think it would work well, but it has worked really, really well. Spec-wise, this is like at the premium level that you would expect. Inside, you're going to get six gigs of RAM. And if you're in North America, you're going to find that you have a Snapdragon 835 CPU processor with 64 gigs of internal storage. Plus, and they, Samsung learned this a couple years ago, you got to have a slot for a micro SD because you're going to be taking a lot of pictures, recording a lot of videos. Having a micro SD card is going to give you a lot more flexibility. There was a couple of extra tweaks that they've done. And one thing I really like uh, about the Note is this uh, 
S Pen Screen Off Memo. And this is great for someone like myself who always forgets to buy milk. I can just quickly write on the black screen, buy milk. And then I can email this to myself, I can text it to my friends. There's a lot of flexibility with this S Pen. And you know, if you like to draw, you can get some amazing drawings from the Note 8. And I just want to kind of show you a, a couple of things that you could do with that. There's a couple of issues that, from the notes, from the spec point of view. And the first one, and the one I think a lot of people are going to have issues with, is a smaller battery. Now, if you compare it with the S8, you're going to notice that the battery is smaller. And then you would probably be wondering why. It's a bigger phone, so it should have a bigger battery. But the issue is the S Pen. Think about it. The S Pen sitting on the bottom right side, that's going to take valuable battery space. So what you have is a 3300 milliamp hour battery, which should give you about a day's worth of charge. Thankfully, it does support fast charge and the wireless charging as well. So if you have one of those Samsung docks, you can get that wireless charge, which I recommend. Now, if I have to give my final impressions about the Note 8, one thing you'll notice is that it's always offered a, a huge step over the S line, the Galaxy S line phones. But nowadays, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. In fact, they're almost par with each other. It's hard for me to pick between the Note 8 and the Galaxy S8 Plus because both are big phones, slightly bigger with the Note 8, but you know, it, it is a hard choice for a lot of people. And I think consumers are going to be kind of weighing either or because when you're in that big phone category space, you know, there's not much difference on it. The biggest difference though, and what really attracted me to this is the camera. That, the, having that live focus ability to be able to blur the background images, to have those things. If you're in like to Instagram or, or Facebook, you're going to get a lot of likes just because you're going to have better photos. The big elephant in the room with the Note 8 is the price. If you buy this unlocked, you're looking to spend $12.99. That, my friends, is a lot of money. You could buy a laptop for that price. However, you could actually turn this into a laptop if you get the deck station where you can connect your own monitor and keyboard to the Note 8 and essentially use this as a computer because if you look at the specs, it is pretty much a computer inside. All in all, if you look at the pros of the Note 8, what you're going to have, a 6.3 inch quad HD AMOLED screen, HDR display, you're going to have wireless fast charging, the infinity display is curved, so there's virtually no bezel on the side, and a stylus that it gives you fantastic functionality. The battery is a little bit smaller than what you want, you know, but it is still bigger than the iPhone 7, which has a 2900 milliamp battery. This one, of course, having 3300 milliamps. Is the Note right for you? Well, if you can afford it, if you like creating content, taking pictures, you're an Instagrammer or you're a social media maven, this might be the phone for you. Because of the price, I recommend ditching your laptop, getting the deck station, and using this as your one and only productivity device, not only to consume content, but to create it. Again, here he is, the Samsung Note 8. Let's just hope that this phone don't blow up like last year.